Okay, so today uh, I need to deal with the resource loaders. And I need to rework them to not be silly. So right now, let's focus on armature since it's the top one here. An armature loader is specific to loading an armature uh, with a very specific trade info base, which at the moment, yes, there's only one that it deals with, specifically this one, which is loaded in from a uh, YAML node, which is specifically saying, hey, it's a, if I can find it down here, it's like armature V1, right? Armature V1. That is a specific type. But, and that makes sense for now, but that won't always be the case. Eventually, in the future, I'll probably have an arc and armature V2, V3, a full armature, a partial arm, whatever. Different forms of armatures that I'm going to have to deal with. And unfortunately, right now, each actual like resource itself, in this case, faux armature, takes in a very specific loader when it is created and uses that to load itself in. So if I have a pointer to the faux armature out of, you know, wherever I am, and I say, okay, I need this armature loaded because it's being referenced by something else somewhere else outside all i have is the pointer or the reference to this object i say hey i'm going to request load what happens right now is it goes inside request load and then it goes into the one specific loader i have and requests that resource to be loaded which makes sense currently because there's only one type of armature that exists we don't support any other types. That isn't going to remain the case forever. And the fact that we're lock we're so tightly locking each armature into a specific like uh, loader, and thus it can only be like a V1 forevermore, that is that is not that's not good. No bueno. Uh I don't want that to be happening in the uh, moving forward. This also currently means that, let's say, I think loaders. Yeah. If resources have uh, references to other types, so a, so a material has a reference to images, maybe, or shaders right now. In order to create those shaders or those images right now, because like the actual base, the core uh, re resource has a reference to a loader, when I create a new material and I'm loading in a material, I also need to currently maintain, br I need to bring in the shader loader and the image loader so that when I'm genera uh, generating, let's say, I'm creating material and hey, you know, it's got a reference to a new shader. I have to, and you know, I can find it here. But the problem is, if the shader does not already exist, like this is the first time it's ever being referenced, and I need to create a new one, like here, right? I'm creating a new shader because it doesn't exist yet in the pool. That makes sense. I need to both give it the ID and the loader that I'm tying it to, but you know, this is a loader that I already know right now because there's only one type. In the future, I may not know, and I don't want to have to deal with me bringing in all of the lo possible loaders and sorting through them to figure out which one the shader needs. I should not need to know. All I should need to know is that this is a shader. I am referencing a new shader. This is the ID throw it into the shader pool and then like it should be able to figure out how to load itself that way now with all of that nonsense out of the way i need to fundamentally change how i'm dealing with the loading 
the loaders and how like the the resources uh basically deal with the loading mechanism how they load themselves as weird and intricately as whatever that it may be so Presumably one of the first things I need to do is get rid of the loader reference from the core resource type. But I'm not entirely sure what to replace it with. Because there needs to be some way for me to just have a, a armature reference and just request load. And then like somehow this is going to be loaded. I can't reference a specific loader. I might be able to reference the simulation state. But that's quite shaky. Because if I'm making a copy of this resource elsewhere. Well, actually, hold on. If I'm making it, why would I need to make a copy of it? Uh, references, okay. Hmm. I may have to have some kind of weird, intricate uh, item. What I'm thinking of is that I'll replace this ref uh, this pointer with like a function pointer. This is like the the loader, the load resource uh, function pointer. Something that basically. Uh, goes into so what in the armature loader i pass in a function that's like the import function this right here actually perhaps if i shift that into the resource and when this resource is cre is added to a pool the pool will automatically add this based on where the pool's from Hmm. This is very odd. Okay, that's uh, I'm thinking of like the void star, like P mm, load call. Something like that. It's currently null pointer, whatever. When I create a new armature, should these actually be standalone like this? It doesn't really make much sense for them to be standalone. Does it? What if I only get our, uh, items from the pool? Because right now what I'm doing is I'm creating uh, resources and then I'm passing them into pools. What if I only just have like the deal with the creation and destruction of resources through the pool instead, and it just gets a st and it just gets a pointer out instead? That would make a bit more sense. Hmm. Okay, maybe I need to start here. I need I need to I need to shake up how I do. So, how do I deal with add, right? Add, and then I have find like this. Okay. Why? How is this? This is a vector right now. Not really the, the best, most effective. And quite frankly, I may want to change it up for the other type of 
data pool I have, but for the moment it works. So, okay, Armature is kind of already in use, actually. So let's actually uh, roll this back. Wait, what the hell's going on here? Oh, okay. Whatever. What would actually make a bit more sense right now is material pulls in image and shader may actually make a bit more sense to kind of start on shader first so actually let me find all the locations where the ad is by deliberately killing it here we got uh yeah we take that out that's great thank you goodbye That's great. We have it in the vertex descriptor loader and the material loader, which makes this almost perfect. So rather than this, we just have a find and, because this is basically going through a find and add anyways. I can probably combine them together. You can have a find and a find and add function together. Which make a bit more sense to me. Hmm. Would there be much contention? I'm not sure. I may want to play around with that a little bit. Okay, okay. What if so we already have the find function? That's probably fine. We're gonna have like a new one, which is faux shader star add or find. Find or add. Which is going to have just a faux resource ID. I need to also change it over to do that resource. That's what matters. It's the resource ID. I know what it is when I'm on the way. I'm when I'm creating it. I know what it is. I know what it is. That's why I'm here in the first place, right? I'm not searching just through different resource pools, am I? Why would I? The only reason I can think of is that I would be doing it because yeah. yeah 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 we'll do it this way and then what i'm thinking is down on the sh shader pool we have the new function which is basically the same as this i'm wondering if okay I kind of want to use this, but then that's more contention with locks. I may just want to do this. Turn P shader. So we'll just kind of have, what is it? Standard scoped lock. Lock of MSync. We just get it and then we unlock it on the way out. That's it. So we do this. Do that if we found it. Uh, return to shader. Okay, we exited out already there. Otherwise, not found. Great. Now instead, we'll just do it this way instead. So, okay, the reason that's, oh yeah, that's the reason why I didn't create it here is because I didn't have the loader. 
but I don't need, I should not need the loader moving forward. So equals new faux shader, but we're going to have, it's just a resource, right? For the moment, it's that. Um, and shaders and place. And then we return that. We It's a scoped lock, so we leave peacefully. Okay. Now we have to go back to shader. We have to deal with, not that, this shader. Okay, we have, that's that. We have the load function. I'm not sure how it works quite yet. Um, hmm. So at the moment, we have the po uh, p load function, and we'll just have like you know it's a faux shader star p shader. That is the load function right now as it stands. Or that doesn't really matter quite yet. Call to load a shader. Okay. So instead, we are going to have a p load function. That. Okay, that makes a bit more. Uh, makes a little bit of sense. Go back down to shader. Uh, do, 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 do. Need this. Okay, great. We got that. Load FN. Okay. But the idea is that here we'll replace that with this. Like that. Take that back out, take that out, take that out. Okay, we don't need the shader loader. We don't need to know about it anymore. Um, that would also be kicked out as well. It'd also be kicked out here, that's great. Uh, for the moment, as a halfway step, I'm going to have to do something where I say, hey, you know, fo shader pool. Where I'm going to have to know. Ooh, I don't want to know. Not yet. Interesting, interesting, interesting. So 
So, registrar, interesting. Like, how I create the resource pools, then I create the resource loaders. I can actually flip this around a little bit. So I can say, hey, you know, uh, this is the shader loader. Just move for shader loader. And I can say, hey, that's what we're putting in there. We got the sh new that with the P shader loader. down the shader pool the load function is currently um, reference no equals we have the mm, what's it? It's faux shader, right? Yes, star p shader. That where we go. Hey, you know, p shader loader. Uh, yeah, I don't actually have that yet, do I? Shader loader, uh, shader pool, sorry. We say, hey, you know, um, let's see, it's an MP, it's a member pointer, like that. MP shader loader. Okay. Going back to shader. Get, okay, get rid of this one. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. This is a whole lot of. Not exactly great. P loader. Okay, P loader is gone. We we'll have this. We we'll also have. Oh, I don't have anything for unloading yet either. Okay, uh, let's change this up to also accept a boolean, which is like whether or not it's being loaded or unloaded, true or false. So I still only have the one pointer. I don't have to have multiple pointers, just one pointer dual use. This is such a rare. This is a rare enough thing that I can take the performance hit for that for sure, for sure. So we got this. So we got this. If load, let me do this. Load something.
no known conversion from lambda blah 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 to for second argument. Um, what is this because of the equal thing? Because I'm bringing in implicit state. I think it is. Okay, that makes a little bit of sense. Uh, this would ch change into, don't need any of this. To that, okay. We'll have to do the same thing for. Mm -hmm. Okay, I still need to have uh, a friend to the foe shooter loader. So I still need uh, that because I'm still trying to. I don't know why I'm still trying to encapsulate all this nonsense. This is way beyond something that can be easily encapsulated. Mm -hmm. No, no conversion from lambda to void pointer. Faux shader that and that for second argument. Not viable requires one argument, but two are provided. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that throws that idea out the window right away. Unless I go through with the idea of having uh, the separate pointer. Um, I can, I can, okay, if I do have a second pointer, so that shader bool, something like that. So I do have two of these. Text of something that I can use. And that would give me a lot more flexibility if I just have some kind of contextual something or other I can provide. And then just the rather than just the free function. Well, it would make sense. Hmm. Okay, let's go with this idea. We have that. So we have uh, void star. Like that. Hmm? 
Okay. We now have context. So if that Boolean white star P load context. Now each shader by itself will still retain the ability to be just loaded straight up without having to figure out without having to necessarily have references to loaders or content or uh, pools or anything like that. Yeah. I can, pro I can live with that. And because hmm, this doesn't necessarily matter then either. Void star, so I can I can just reinterpret cast that on the way out. So we have NT load context. This and boolean. Ah, uh, sorry, boolean. True. And then we have the same thing on the way out, which would be NT load function, where we have NT load context. This false hmm let's see if we can get that in the right, same order it looks like clang D has decided to stop working one of these days I, uh, no it's actually working fine still it hasn't crashed. It's just not. It's doing something. I don't know what. All right. Load context. We go back to get rid of that shader pool. He's got that shader uh, pool. When we create, so we're going to say, hey, you know, it's um, resource yeah oh sorry pointer yeah, pointer great we have the context with the shader we do this diff load Void star. Going back down to shader. Void void. Bool. Loader. Loader context. So we have MP load context.
here. Basically, we're removing a bunch of things from here that don't really need to be here. So find or add like that. It's just the vertex shader, which is just the resource ID. That's great. Move forward at all. Not quite. Works together. Not quite, not quite. What's going on here? Shader create processing. just going to create it one way or the other or find it so build faster build faster okay work First try, right? Yeah, no. Yes! It worked fine. Um, hmm. Okay. This is good. This is good. This is great. But... That's only one part. I mean, that's the deal with the shader loader, shader pool and stuff. So I would no longer require material uh, loader and stuff. It would no longer require the shader loader. That is gone. That is gone. Mm, that is gone. I need to reload so I can actually get the uh, clang format and what have you. CD build, make format, please. There we go. Go down to material loader. We clear that out. Shader loader don't, no longer matters. That is what I can use there instead. This is gone. This is gone. Shader loaders. It was a pointer. It never had a reference in here. So I'm slowly disentangling the loaders from propagating all over the place. Very slowly and very carefully. But it is happening. That's only one side of the equation. The other side of the equation is that I need to kind of improve the case of, so like uh, where the import registrar was. The case is where, let's say, it already exists. I need to deal with the fact whether or not it already exists. I need to be able. I need to. Re, I need better return uh, error codes or that from here because resources, resources, if I recall, are supposed to be immutable, so you cannot overwrite them, unlike component data, which means. Okay. Uh, why do we have this? I don't need this anymore, right? Yeah. Okay, can't quite do that yet. That kind of shrinks that down as well. Less time spent looking for stuff. There we 
this is still good. Okay, like I need to I need to have the case like if I can't find the pool, if it already exists. And then the return case of true it already exists. Or if we we've added it from this, which then goes back into a whole other little shindig. So it's been what a forty minutes, so gotta grab a quick drink and mull this over. Alright. <clears throat> so uh Import registrar, shader, create processing. This function, yes. Okay, I need to return something like uh, I need an error code or uh, return a standard error code. Mm. Right, because this function, let me double check where these are actually called. Where are they called? Ah! Where, 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 where? IMX includes source importers. We go in here. We're going to do, 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 do. not quite. Um, yes, in here. Importer, we'd have a call towards like import state data, not state data, resource definitions. Git resource, something like this. So we'd parse the file stem, we'd open the ML file, then we'd go through and find the import function. Okay. So then we go back to for IMAX, we need to change this up for generator. This is a very specific one to this, actually, isn't it? To, to this YAML thing, right? What would it be? Oh, that's not great. I mean, that makes sense. We can turn an error code there. But this one, not so much. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about the create function, right? That That's what I'm talking about. Not the import. I'm, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Importer. Here. We have the ML importer. The ML importer generator. Go into this. Just sitting here. So this isn't going to return. This is going to return a error code. Mm, yeah. Do error codes real quick. Lovely. Here, here we go. So, let's YAML error code. FTP. Like that. Okay. We need an enum, which is like so IMX. Resource import error. Something like this. Uh, just an int. I mean, it doesn't really matter. 
It really doesn't. Equals zero like that. So the flow minus import error uh, equals doesn't matter. The thing I was interested in though what was it registrar? No. Was it registrar? No. Import registrar. Okay, there are three cases I have here. One is pool doesn't exist. Two is that, and that's a success case. Okay, while I'm here, uh, we're not on mainline. Let's check out. Whoops. Resource refactor. Uh, branch. Thank you. Okay, error code here. Error. Um, error. Resource already exists. Like that. Okay, we got those. Uh, we're missing a couple other items, so we'll have this. These little things. Like that. Uh, that, that, throw that out. Okay, we go to the other side. No, this is a uh, whoops. This is actually very generic. This will be apply. These will apply whether it's YAML or not. One like that. So this technically should actually be under here. Go down there. You go down to there. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Go to this. I need a CPP now. So include for Linux error code HTTP. import. Like that, okay. code here we have these messages okay great the rest of these mm 
back up to here for I'm uh, okay it's probably because I need to do this so that'll be uh, there we go parsed up correctly nice so uh, back up to it's not even here anymore import registrar return okay we're returning that instead and return for okay imx error code error pool not found You have a third error case. Find or add. I need the case of like if it already exists. I don't want to re add it because that's not what I'm looking for. That's not a successful case. I'm not supposed to be able to add another resource with the same ID. I shouldn't even be in the case where I'm looking to add a, the same resource with the same ID. Not when I'm loading it from here with this function. And hmm. Actually, that's also another case. Why would I want to have an error code be up there at, for IMAX? I'd want it to be localized so that I can kind of. Uh, make it special like make it so i can have like faux uh uh where am i faux resource error shader pool not found or shader pool shader already exists or something like that rather than a very generic one like that Yeah, that would actually be a very good case to not. Okay, what's what we got? That's just, that's that's still a good case. I like that. Clang D's broken again. Great, 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 great. These two go away. Back that one up. And go in here. We'll have an error code here
something like that instead. That'll almost allow me to pinpoint very few locations where this error code can be fired from. Which I like. A bit long on that, but yeah, I can work with that. Uh, we've got so we've got <clears throat> armature error code like that. Then we go to import registrar. Then we include. That we go down here. We have oh that. It's great. Pool not found. That's good. Then we have. Okay, I need to go. How do I work with this? Find or add. I need a specific add case. I really do for this to work. So this function goes away, find or add. something like that that's the idea this will then be used in here then we need to return a resource YAML error, shader resource already exists. Like that. And going back to the shader pool, I'll need to basically almost do the same thing as this. Scope lock. Pointer. Otherwise, we gotta go carry on to. Sorry, what's going on? P shader increment ref count. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Increment ref count.
found added. So same thing as this. Okay, let's uh, do this as a uh, Rather than a lambda, we'll actually just call it like the shader. Is that what it returns? Is it void right now? That's not a very good idea. Void shader function. So we have that, and then we have. So I'll kind of reduce that by just having a like shader load function. It's an independent one like that. That makes a bit more sense. Match a constructor for that. Oh, yep. P shader. Okay. Run that, get everything formatted, close it up, and reopen with uh, Clang format and Clang D to work again correctly, preferably. So, whoops, get rid of that. I only want to do one. Thank you very much. Now there's, okay, yeah, this actually does make sense. There's nothing to return, really. This function should always exist, and these should always be valid. Hmm. At the moment, this makes sense. I haven't completely detached this, because this will be uploaded, um, <clears throat> To the importers soon. This is just like a temporary location for these. As I slowly make my way through. So at the moment I need to hmm, do a whole bunch of items. Uh, crap. Okay, error code. We need to do just like Just a generic error. Uh, and unspecified. Okay, great. Yeah, okay. So if I want to, okay, uh, putting this in, 
what I can do is I can put the error code. Okay, I need to add the error codes to YAML here. I need to add it to physics as well. Because this is just changing. Because this is changing, right? This is massively changing. Hmm. Okay, this is changing, which means a whole bunch of other little things going on down the line are changing. Which means component function, no, those are all those types. Good, 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 good. This really means that like all of these need to be changed at the same time, really. Right? Unless, yeah. that it's now error code like that completion shape yeah okay so here's the uh... oh no I have to do good error handling what a waste of my time. It's what I'd be saying if I worked in a large company right now. Or basically any of my previous jobs. Because proper area handling, that's a no-no. Can't have that, it's a waste of time. Having precise, precise ability to find out where errors are occurring and coming from. This will really help me with debugging down the line. It almost always does. The enum pro physics YAML results. Error. gone. There it is. Error code, we already added it there. CPP side, yeah, basically this. Okay. Got that there, got that there, that there, that there, that there. Uh, we are going down to three. Success. Does it really matter? I mean, it technically does.
could just kind of make it generic like that. Since it's just going to be local to here, it never, it never goes outside of here. Yeah. You know what? That's just going to, just going to bother me. Physics. YAML. Error category. That. 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 And that. Great. Then we go down to import registrar. Fantastic. We're here. Now we are missing. We're going to have a generic code I don't quite have yet okay what what, what is it for uh, Vulcan mm, oh that wasn't it it's the core it's in the core it is called VK results There's actually no generic error. Okay, is there like a generic? Okay, whatever, whatever, whatever. It's going to be physics YAML error unspecified. It's broken again already. Come on. Clang D, you're really just cramping my ability to. I mean, it doesn't say it's crashed, but. Oh, here we go. I, I guess. If I save, it's just doing nothing. Awful. So we here, we have those, and then we have what's going on here. Uh, this is now going to return. That instead. So, oh, visits YAML unspecified. Great. Um, that oh, visits error. YAML success. Okay. We're back into the resource area, right? Yeah. So that's that. So I want to mm, return this, write this. It's going to be based on this. Found great. And specified. Same thing here. Our code. This should continue to work like this. Full resource. YAML. Error success like that. Good, 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 good. This, these are all still broken. Armature create processing standard. Good.
like that. No success. Okay. That. <clears throat> Success. Return for resource. YAML. Mesh. Whoop. Mesh. Uh, no, no, return. Specify, specify. These have been updated. Now I need to update the error codes to match the fact we've got a bunch of new ones. So we gotta go first of all resource. So we gotta go with armature, then we go image, then we go material, the mesh, the shader, then vertex descriptor. So that shader goes to armature. One, two. Uh, goes to image. One, two. Then we go material. One, two. Mesh. One, two. Shader, da da. Text descriptor, one, two. Then I need to add all, all of these. Okay, I need some kind of uh, definition. Define, return, define. A macro. What's that? So, case mm, that x. 
return dot dot x that. Like that. Make format. Do this. So that result case that 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 Good point. I'm on the wrong one here. Do 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 do. Uh, <laughs> error code. Okay, wrong one here. Yes, here. Okay, 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 okay. So that, 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 that. That. Not that, not, not these. Libs YAML, okay, that makes sense, yes. Yes, these are a no. Out for the moment. So I can stash these ones. Back up by one. Okay. Still doing good. Good, 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 good. We got all that. We go down to the application import state here. So we're going along to where we're doing the create so the ECS groups. Da, 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 da. 
Or is this... No, this will be under... IMAX importer. And here is where we... Okay, so we've got the... How's this get resource is just there that that's all it does where does this fit in group data No, I'm looking at this the wrong way, aren't I? Right? There's there's no way that that's how. No, importer, right? This is the wrong thing I'm looking for. This is the import. That's what I'm. Yeah, I'm not looking for that. I'm looking for the other one, which is uh, create. Yeah, here we go. So this is the one I'm looking for where I'm importing all definitions. So we're we're getting there. We're getting closer. Okay, I'll just I'll just live with that for the moment, shall I? That's updated like that. It's updated like that. Okay. So we're another step closer to better error handling and detection. I'll live with it for the moment. So we've got that, 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 that. Uh, are there any other resource? No, those are this is just resources. I don't have any resource types in the bring up application. So this is fine. This is actually working fine for the moment. Okay. Okay. Uh we do this. definitions 
and using the using the what without the use of exceptions. Okay. That's a step forward. Now we get stash pop. So we now go back to this point where we had these guys. Uh, that's going away. Don't need that. That's fantastic. Find or add. That makes sense. That will always have. Yeah, that returns that. Okay. Material loader. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Does this work? The interesting thing is, of course, the import. It's not even there. Where are you? Import registrar. Here we go. Don't need the loader. It's actually, I do need that one. Shader. Shader. There you are. Shader loader, gone. So it's that. Okay. Wow, I'm really hating Clang D right now. We have shader loader here instead. Uh, do I want to move it out of here right now? The answer is not really. I, I mean, I do want to upload it to a, a different object's responsibility, but for the moment, I should just focus on converting these guys to get rid of the loader from uh, other locations first, realistically. And just, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So I got these for shaders. That's great. 
So next would be image. Image is the next big one. Right, shader did indeed remove, yeah. This is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for these. Image HPP. That. Okay. Um, image pool we're going to need to include Oh, yeah, uh, get rid of that, clear that, great. that anymore. And here we have the namespace for the new So for image star, we have that. It's a faux resource ID resource. That's still the same for image star. That we got this to image pool. So we just kind of got to have these two. Put 
place of image. This is almost a templated type now, really. It's so close. Material loader is going to change that up a little bit. Load resource. We have a look at here. It is. Find or add that. Clear that up. Okay. We go to libs for import registrar. We change up this. We no longer require that. Okay. Let's do armature next. Sorry, not that one, this one. Oh, and I need to add.
over here. As we go down to that, we got this, this. loader um, these place that okay uh, bam Change this up. here how much loader is gone don't need it wonderful uh, equals this resource if not this I'm gonna go through and hey, return YAML armature resource already exists. Bam. It's still animated. Good. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to make a cut here because this is just going to repeat a couple times, at least for the recording. We'll go on YouTube. But it's basically going to carry on for material, mesh, and vertex descriptor. And then I'll be back when I'm ready to commit and upload uh, or convince the next stage. You, you, you get the idea. All right. So at this point, I've changed most of them over. Basically, all the resources are using the new system except for one. Let me just reset these items. The only one that it's, that's missing right now is material. Now, the material loader is a bit of a special case because right now, uh, materials use the loader not just for loading but also for storing some uh, particular data uh, every frame it looks like this is called now I just want to double check what that this is called every frame I think that I think it is uh, in the application it tries to get the descriptor set on a per frame from the from the material and that goes into the loader and it creates a descriptor set every single frame. Now, 
this is a very odd one. So hold on, set AI, set an allocator. The set is the, we're resetting on each frame the entire descriptive pool that the material loader is handling. Now this seems a little not great. Realistically, the material loader shouldn't be dealing with storing the materials or creating them every frame. I mean, how often do materials change? Most, some, some admit materials admittedly will change almost every frame. You know, special ones that have uh, probably something to do with like uh, playing a movie of some kind, like each, every, um, 60 times a second, it's a new frame that's drawn. That makes sense, because then the image will switch ever over fairly often. But like, for something like this, these materials, which are just, you know, like, a, it's just a single image, uh, a single texture, that's used across a long period of time. I don't have to recreate it every single time. That makes little sense. So what I need to do for materials is... Before I can properly remove this, I need to split what's happening. I need first, I do need, need the loader. I need the loader to work and all that fun stuff. <clears throat> but secondly, I need the ability, I need to uh, change this up. I need to split off the ability to store, like the material not management, because management should really still be done by the loaders, but like to store it after it's been created. Because once all this is done, then all I need is a permanent descriptor set that I can then just disseminate out throughout the application. And of course, the image will have to remain Hmm. Interesting. The image will change. I'll need to. Okay. Yeah, that, that, that's probably also why is because I'm I'm pulling in the image info every time as well. Like, yeah, this is. Ugh. I'll need to do something special for when images change. Like when you change the quality settings, it goes up and down in quality. A new MIP level is loaded or unloaded, which means that this will have to be recreated. But again, that's a relatively rare operation. That's not going to happen 60 to 120 to God knows how many times a second. That'll happen maybe a few times a second if we're really crazy. So again, I need to, I need to split the storage of descriptors stuff I really do so let's uh, do that this is probably something that needs to go into like the VK hmm. <laughs> Descriptor set store, descriptor set. For, okay, the fragment descriptor pool is just holding the fragment, the pipelines basically. Right? Yeah. Or the, the fragment side of the pipeline. Then the vertex descriptor is the yeah, mesh information. Pipeline pools the whole thing. Descriptor set, descriptor set, descriptor sets. How do I fit this in? I know I want to do it, but I'm just not entirely sure on how. Okay, let's close all the others. Just close them all. 
uh, what was I? Create descriptor set. Okay, what do we need here? We have a descriptor set, descriptor pools. We disseminate the uh, the sets. Right now, I'm just using one pool per frame, so I reset it every time. Yeah, fairly easy to manage. Hmm. Okay. Let's build up a little one right here. So struct, let's say scriptor set pool. Realistically, we just have a, a VK descriptor set. Or whatever this is. What is this? Descriptor pool. Which we generate sometime earlier, like here. Where we have a whole bunch of items we put into it. Okay. Do we want to maintain like who has sets this from this pool? Not really. This will be more of a permanent pool as well. Uh, I believe that when we create a descriptor pool, we can like create info. Uh, descriptor create flags. There are problem. There's. <sighs> Let's move up to. Come on. That. Well, nope. Here. There are flag bits. There should be one that's. Allows us to free descriptor sets. That should allow us to use it more of a permanent storage. So we want to create like a more permanent. Uh, scriptor pool. And when we're creating it, we have to do something along the lines of the script pool size, create info. Device uh, pool CI and then the pool. Let me double check in the documentation what exactly pool size count is about. Open VK spec. Okay. VK descriptor pool create info. It's thinking real hard about it. Okay, we're here. Okay. Uh, max sets is maximum 1025 pool size count. Number of elements in P pool sizes. Okay, so that's the number of these that we have. Okay, that makes sense. So maximum sets is 1024. We have 1024 descriptors of these. So I can kind of muck around with that a little bit. But 
But one thing we want to do is create flag free descriptor bit set bit, which I believe. If the descriptor pool has not had, okay, here we go. Or most recently reset, then fragmentation must not cause an allocation failure. I'm pretty sure that this just allows me to the free individual sets, which is kind of what I'm looking for. I'll have some kind of logic that allows to have to like if I can't use a pool, I'll create another pool beside it or something. <clears throat> okay, so this VK descriptor sets only is on pools that have had the create free. Yeah. Okay. Something like this. That it's M pool. And then what's going to have to happen is I'm going to have to pass this into the loader, and the loader is going to use this to create new sets. And when materials are being destroyed or replaced, then I need to make sure that I'm deleting these properly. I have to pass in the set. Like how do I free? Free descriptor pool set count sets. Okay. So if I'm Let's just say I'm just uh, freeing a single set. So then it would become BK, uh, return BK sets in device and um, pool one and set like that. Well, I'm freeing a complete set. Okay, now let's see. Allocation. Allocation is how is this done? Set AI to pull these number of sets. Okay. Where I'll pass this in set AI. I I pass in this. This I would I would um. Hmm. 
script or pool would equal and pool. And then I try to return I think that will, would that be enough? Okay, I think it would be just for, okay. It's not a permanent solution, but it's something that can work in the meantime. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this like here. It's going to be like a uh, descriptor. It's going to be like this. Um, not that, but this. Infographics VK descriptor persistent and descriptor pool. It doesn't really matter if it's persistent or not. Wait, no, it does because it has the free for the moment. point is I don't really want to have this managed by the material loader I mean realistically if I'm destroying the material loader then I need to also unload the associated materials at the same time because then I won't be able to figure out how to unload them later So I could have them tied together. Um, okay, this isn't really something I should be bothering about right now. So I'm not. Let's just unload the, uh, reset these. What can I do about this right now? Hmm? Don't save that, wonderful. Let's go back to material. How do I deal with this? What I'm going to do is I'm going to go and do a really half-assed solution where I am going to, at the moment, go to image, let's copy over the load context and the load function. I'm going to put that stuff in instead right here. Change these out. Okay, go to image, go to material. I'm just not at the, the stage right now where I feel comfortable doing a descriptor. I don't have enough context or enough, uh, yeah, I don't have enough context to really think of a good way to actually deal with that descriptor set pool yet, or how exactly it would fit in. And rather than doing a really terrible solution, I want to do like a kind of 
a just regular terrible solution, which is just going to be me kind of ignoring it and sliding around it for the moment. Because what's going to happen is we're going to say, hey, you know, it's reinterpret cast of bow material loader star of the P loader. Uh, sorry, not P loader, the MP load context. Do that. Okay, uh, image pool to go to material pool. Got these two. Replace that. Go to material. Great, great. This we have the new name T namespace function. That and that, and we go, hey, you know, image is replaced with material. small like that great we go to import registrar our material may be found here get rid of that great if not found then we need to return Material resource already exists. Okay, we got this uh, where we go image loader, the material loader. single stage so now I've uploaded loader uh, stuff from the actual individual resources themselves up to the pools and next I'll move them out of the pools up to the just the registration system instead uh, but I'll probably do that another time tomorrow uh, once this is done because this is going on long enough yeah Got more than enough changes to make. Uh -huh.
Let's make sure I'm not having a whole bunch of uh, address issues running around. What are the uh, commands I use to run this thing? Um, none. Ooh, okay. That's a lot of bytes leaked and a lot of allocations. Okay, I added a bunch of things. Am I just not deinitializing? I'm probably just not deinitializing these things. All right, on the way out. Am I not calling like on destroy? Is that what's going on? Yep, that's it. Okay. Okay, let's at least get this in. Um, loader pattern. Okay, put that in, then I got to do some memory nonsense. Okay, so that's in. Let's have a look at this. Uh, uh, great. Yeah, great. Okay, whatever. Do this. You can close that up. Close all this up. Go back to the application. What's happening? What's not happening? Uh, more specifically, is the real question. When I create, where is it? This. What am I doing? 
Where is it? It'll be in here somewhere. It'll be like the one of the first cases up here. We do that. So, what happens? Do I actually call into this? Go inside. Destroy simulation. Great, I'm in here. Great. Uh, I'm going to deinitialize the simulation first. Which means I go through. Interesting. I deregistered the functionality first. Okay. So that. Hmm. Okay. So let's say when I come on through to hit this, what's going on? I'm gonna deinitialize, deregister that. I'm just the initial. Uh, I'm just deregistering it, the functionality. I'm not actually going around to deregister anything that uses it yet. Ooh, right. That makes sense. Okay. I need to go through and deinitialize this stuff first, right? For anything that that does run right now, so the M states. This is where the M states becomes a thing. On destroy. Oh yeah. Okay, back to here. Where am I? Here. Many of these. So, M for auto. We go through M states. How would we do this? It's P simulation state, D init simulation. We don't want to deinitialize everything. We just want to remove the thing that we're on right now. So I need to like. Functionality dot 
on the initialization sim state this is in local right this is pretty local memory here on the stack since we're already here dot if that run that and then if functionality dot on destroy This is something that's going to have to happen to go through. And technically, we want to do the same thing on the registration side as well. At the moment, okay, we're going to go into here, deregistering this. Great, we are here. We have how many states? We have one. Mm -hmm. uh, Deinitialize segfault. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have three descriptor pools which we're deinitializing right now for this system, and you're not having it. They already deinitialize this somewhere else. I wouldn't think so. Did I though? Did I call this somewhere else? No, because I'm supposed to, for each of these I call, I already nullify these. Whoops. Wait a I think I've got my deinitialization order and just completely screwed up. Because I do, deinitialization, great. Deinitialize, I'm running, Deep initialize of these two, then I'm going through deleting all the resources, XR stuff, then I'm deregistering basic functionality here. Okay. What I'm doing here. Did I... This is XR. I don't actually have a point where I deinitialize Vulcan, do I? I destroy the upload context, I delete these things, and then I don't really. Yeah, I got a whole bunch of things wrong with this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually save this for tomorrow to deal with. I need to fix up my registration deregistration before I can continue on with the rest of the stuff again. Uh, so to start with, I'm going to deal uh, with the the d. I'm going to check the deinitialization of a simulation. State before I reached its destruction. So somewhere in here, after I just call to unload and process unload requests for all of this stuff. So about here, before we get to the FOXR, I don't think I'm even destroying Vulcan stuff. Oh wait, hold on. Simulation set resource loaders. 
I'm deinitializing them here. Why? I don't need to do this here. Do I? I don't think so. Maybe this is what's screwing me over. Actually, no, this shouldn't even screw me over, should it? Because it'll still be fine. Right? Maybe it will be. We'll see. So go in here, we got this. Great. We're going inside. There's nothing to deinitialize from this. Is there? Not. Okay. Go back into this. We deinitialize the next one. How much loader? Nothing to do here. Uh, we're do uh, destroying the image loader stuff. Material loader. These items are all nulled. That's cleared out. No, 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 great. Okay, next. That nullified. 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 Oh, I got the shader loader here as well. I gotta clear that out. Don't need that, right? Yeah. Goodbye that. Does mean wherever this is created on the import registrar, correct? When that's creation. Let's find out in a second when I come down to the registrar. Shader loader is going away. What do we got going on here? Uh, the shader loader is gone here. I also need to remove the image loader from material. That's no longer required. Registrar, right about here. This isn't the one I'm looking for. It's the other registrar, right? This one. Got rid of the image. Get rid of the image loader. That's great. Shader pool, image pool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pool. Okay. Changes here. 
And going back to this, yeah, okay. Picks up the last one. Great. Okay, back to core. And application and all that fun stuff. So this is fine. That just destroys the graphics upload context. I never actually destroy the Vulcan stuff. Which I should be doing after the XR stuff is also destroyed. So if, no, here it is. Destroy session, destroy runtime. So that's kind of the problem here is that I'm destroying functionality after I've already destroyed the session and runtime, which is not going to work. I need to do it before I destroy the stuff. So I need to call core. Destroy simulation or deinitialize simulation if simulation set So that's probably the big issue was that it just could not destroy stuff because that and the fact that it wasn't even going through and trying to call that stuff. Oh, did it just not work? Okay. Um, oh, that's still a lot of stuff. That's a lot less stuff though. So that means I am properly going around deinitializing stuff, but there's still a lot of stuff I'm losing track of. So things like this. Um, like editor name map items. Okay, let's check core. We are calling eventually to destroy the simulation at the very end, right? Does the simulation, it does that. They just deinitializes things. It doesn't destroy stuff. So one thing I need to do on here is I need to, if I have name maps, I need to destroy them. D init simulation. order of course okay that and that and then we delete the rest of the simulation state
come on. I don't want to get stuck on that. No, there we go. Okay. That's more down. Getting better. Wait, hold. Is that it? 26 allocations. Uh, most of it will be... That's outside. That's outside. That's also outside. This is from that... Something to do with um, this. I'm not properly deleting. Okay. This is from that, which is just not broken. That's outside. So there's only one left that's really me that's doing it right now. It's whatever is going on in here. So when I'm creating a new shader from a shader loader, okay. So I create the shader. And what I've been doing with this new shader I put it down into that. I have that. Okay. I go to process unload. I'm just missing this somehow. Okay. I'm, I'm kind of a lot better with that. Stage that. them that in anyways application we're now having
Getting to the issues. Just kind of leaves this deregister functionality. Now, this is what I want to test out now, where I'm going to see hey, can I deregister basic functionality before I'm done with everything else? That is an interesting one. Like, would it basically lead to the same thing, or would it cause crashes otherwise? Because it shouldn't matter which order I do them. It shouldn't, being the main word there. Okay, that's clean. And that's still good, right? Yeah. It should be 26 allocations, 96, 72. Okay, it's the exact same thing. So it's it's good. So we can clean, sort that out. We're, we're back on track here. I just need to do this. And I'm going to bet when I register functionality, da -da 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 -da, already existing Add this new functionality to them. So I need to go through four auto style piecing state. So it shouldn't matter which order I do this. It really shouldn't. How do I determine if it's initialized or not? Uh, I mean, deinitialization doesn't really matter too much. But this does. And the on initialization requires me to know. Yeah, okay, hold on. What was the call for initialization? I have this info state, which is just these. These are the things I get from the sim state. These are items I get from outside. If I want to be able to register functionality on the go, I need to be able to ha keep these items around. So definition point of the function. 
async job function and the graphic session it was initialized with. Struct for simulation external init info. Would be these items. So rather than that, we have these, that, and that. Okay. Persistent, initialized, and phone. Um, That's what I want to bring in, for sure. Yes, that's precisely what I want to bring in. Follow simulation. What is this? This is the other stuff I want to bring in. What do I call this? Check state. What's what is state? Hmm? What is the state? State lists for simulation. State lists. That's what I'm thinking of. So on initialization, we'll have that. And we'll have that. Uh, I don't, I need that, but I don't need it here, right? Simulation state and the in info. Okay. that and this in right that's called star that we don't have to it's no longer copied in it's just that we just pass that through well, that'll be a const that will not be that's a const yes get this portion done at least so uh, we need to go to registration probably starting on wherever the hell this goes wrong first which will be right here 
So we got that, and we got this. Because that, 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 that. Oh, not that one, not that one. Sorry, not this one. Here. Error matching this call. What's going on is it needs to be like a reference to that. Oop. Okay. Oh, wait, hold on. I'm in the wrong context, isn't that? Yeah. Okay. Okay. We're doing... That doesn't even really matter at this point. It's all going well. Twenty six, ninety six, seventy two. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. 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 So 
So let's do this. We got, uh, let's change p-state list to be like p-sim state data. Then one thing I'm going to have to do on this is I'm going to have to introduce init info. So uh, if we're doing that, then mm, core, okay, hold on, core. I have these. I'm already like going on to that. So why don't I just add that to the simulation state? Eventually, I'm going to have to do something about having simulation state be fully public like this. Or should I really? I don't think so. Maybe I should just change up. Okay, when I'm doing initialization, I'm initializing the simulation. Great, I'm here. I have these state lists. What's going to happen is if only one thing, I'm only initializing simulations or registering or deregistering functionality one at a time thanks to this global lock. So it's not super insane, but if p simulation state uh, p in info dot not equal dk uh foe no handle And we'll just say it's that, yeah. And then we just return for the moment. We'll add an error code later. So what's going to happen is p simulation state equals 
like that. Then we have this stuff. Um, that means when we come back up to Okay, uh, we'll just do this one portion at a time because this is a little bit finicky. Stage that range. Got the registrar, this makes sense. Uh, that's not here. Not quite here yet. This makes sense, but not really. Stage that. Okay, we got that, we got a portion done. Great, now we need to do the other part, which is this stuff. So I got uh, state, we got that here now, which means I need to include info simulation for HTTP. That's unfortunate. got to go to core if State, we need. Do I have a state here? I don't have a state here. I will now start adding functions for this. this uh, in it so dot return right now the graphics 
stuff is intertwined with simulation being initialized. I'll need to split that out eventually. Eventually. But for the moment, we can do this. Is initialized. So we can go into core. We have that. We can try uh, we've registering functionality. We go through this, and then we go through if Then we need to go through each. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Turn that. that in okay so if it's initialized and we have an initialization call that we've just registered then we Create this list, use the info, put that in. Okay. Okay, this is new. Resource pools. Okay, we didn't get it. This one. Why? Is something happening in here? I don't think anything should happen here.
because there's nothing there yet. We're definitely. Okay. No, we have, yeah, we have real things. We check that. Return this pool. Okay, now we're in the data vector. We got this thing. Okay, 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 okay. What's going on here? Is this, is this failing? Is this what's, okay, you know what? Hmm. This is going wrong, isn't it? It's b b b b b b b. Okay, that's why. State, it's not, it's not initialized as empty. Technically, same thing for this, really. Try this again. Okay, good. We got a different uh, error instead. We're okay. Physics don't care. We this no issue. No issue. Um, collision shape issue again, right? Yeah. The initialization can happen as many times as you want safely. It's the initialization that can't happen multiple times. I mean, I could reinitialize. No, I should not. Unless. 
No, no, no. Just if you're adding functionality, it needs to be able to just roll off of already saved state like this if it's initialized. Okay. So you added sim state. You need to update what's going on here. Okay, I need, if client D is just going to keep dying, I need to change the build call task to do make dash J that. I need to do that instead. I need to run format and then that. Okay, mm, these items, great. Save objects and Okay. Okay. Now, now I've spent more than enough time on this today, and I, well, I got that one leak. Uh, this is kind of to do with the resource loading refactoring, which I'm going to work on soon. Once I finish uploading the loader away from the objects and the pools themselves. Give another good thorough scrub through of that. But that's that's sometime in the future. So for tonight, that's it. Cheers. <laughs>